All right, y'all, within this video, we're going to continue our education. So I want to throw out a few awesome thank yous. Uh, first of all, the little comments down here for this project. Uh, I was the one that actually built this whole thing. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, confusion, you need to clear up so that you can continue with your projects. Let me know. I'm here to help out for sure, for sure. So uh, one to uh, Radivus and Asus and Asus. There we go. Radivus Asus and Dev Addict. So Dev Addict, I saw this and that sent me over to your video. So if we take a look at your channel, which is awesome, by the way. Thank you so much. Uh, you have your little video on here. So an hour and 52. This is an amazing video for the all that haven't actually watched this yet. Go watch it. it he does an amazing job. Thank you so much for putting this together, Dev Addict. Uh, there are I, a few things in there I wanted to kind of clarify and touch up because there's some pretty cool things that you're doing in there. And thank you so much for clarifying a few things. I learned a few things out of there too. Uh, what's amazing about these collaborative projects is that, you know, this development behind the Unreal Engine and everything that goes behind it is that everybody kind of works together. So I want to kind of continue that conversation in this visual video kind of way. So yeah, send a reply. I think this would be kind of cool to check out. Um, this whole video is all about uh, this uh, whole project. I'm not going to go into nearly the depth uh, that Dev Addict did because, like I said, bro nailed it. Thank you so much for that. Um, I do have a channel as well. It's very small, a little bit of uh, videos here and there if y'all are interested in this. I do a whole bunch of other things too, not just Unreal. So yeah, this is where this one's going to be posted. Obviously, if you're watching it, you've already know about me. So there it is. Ha ha, you caught my attention. Okay, so a little list of things to kind of chat about. Let's actually jump into said project. This is where you can find it in the Epic. This is what the project actually looks like. So kind of uh, from beginning to end, and I'm gonna mention a couple of time points in here. Um, at nine minutes and 46 seconds, you were talking about actually duplicating these little bad boys. And yeah, you nailed it. However, I wanna add to it because I always think it's worth it to kind of know a little bit more. And I was reading through your comments there, Dev Addict, and somebody was like, oh, thank you for all these shortcuts. So I'm gonna add a few shortcuts to this as well. So the one that was mentioned is if you hold down the alt key and click and drag on these gizmos you get a duplicate you're like oh that's super cool right you can also and this little hallway is a great example of it if you hold down alt and you hold down shift you can actually move the camera along for the ride and duplicate if you just hold shift it just kind of moves along the camera for the ride so yeah kind of a little sweet little spot right there now, at 13 minutes and 49 seconds in there, you mentioned that you can, if you were to fall way down below, you're like, ah, oh, I need to get back, like I can't get back, right? Well, we've actually built something into this project that is gonna help y'all out a lot. If you press the one key on the keyboard, it'll actually send you back to the beginning of lesson one. If you press two, it'll start at lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, lesson five. There are a few other ones and you can actually set them up inside of Unreal as well. To do that, it's actually pretty cool. So let's say I want to, oops, let's go back up over here. So let's say I want to start, oh, I don't know, let's say over here, let's turn around. And I'm looking at the back side of this building, right? And I wanna actually put a camera right here. Well, if I hold down control and hit the zero key, okay, and then if I move my camera, and I hit one, you go back here, but if I hit zero, it sends me right back over here. So you can set these little bookmarks which are really nice to have in there. Very, very awesome. Um, I do want to point out, so at uh, 30 minutes and four seconds, thereabouts, uh, you did mention something about our little, um, it's a bug, you found a bug. <laughs> I didn't find this while I was actually coding it, so thank you for finding it. This is super cool. So if we go inside of our hour of code in here, let's look inside of our blueprints. Go ahead and grab this checkpoint, and we drop it in here, and I'm not gonna reproduce it, but I will talk about what actually happened, and I didn't know that it was there. So this is super cool. And uh, what actually had happened is, you know, we'd actually changed the size on this. Let's set this up to something like, oh, three. And what's happening is now when the character restarts, they actually are three times larger than they need to be. So a good find on that. I thank you for that. I will keep that in mind moving forward on there. Um, and then also, if we move to 34 minutes and 43 seconds-ish, um, you talked about not having the little platforms out here. So something else that we've built into this project, which can be very, very helpful, is that up here inside the levels, now if you don't have this up, let me show you how to get this. So if you go up into Windows, there is a little levels section right here, and you click that on, this thing will come out and just kind of float out in the middle of nowhere. So I've just grabbed it and docked it up here on the side. So if we turn on level two end, you will notice that we now have these pieces in here, which can be very helpful. So if you click on, I believe it's this bad boy right here. Oh, this is the blank one. The one that you were playing with is the one down in the hole. So that guy right there. So let's open that level sequence. 
and you have your sequencer. So you had mentioned in your video that these didn't exist. They do. <laughs> They're up there inside that level. So we're using some sub-levels to kind of help out. And as you actually go through the lessons, they talk about actually opening these up just in case one of the teachers is like, oh, you know, we want to learn about the stuff that's inside level four, but the player needs to be actually uh, actually needs to be able to get up to that spot. So you can actually turn these on. In this case, I'm just making them visible so that the player or the user the student or even the teacher that's actually going through this can actually get to it really quickly. So you'll notice that there are little tiny blue marks next to this. What this means is this will only show up through a blueprint. What I'm gonna do is actually right click on, let's say, oh, let's just do level two. Right click on this and we're gonna go ahead and say, change the streaming method and we set always loaded. So now what happens is that when I play the game and I'm actually gonna come over here, right mouse click, and I'm gonna come down here to the very bottom and I'm gonna say play from here. So what this will do is when I play it, my character actually starts from said location. And you can see that now this level is actually loaded. And if you take a look, you will notice up here, this one is actually loaded and visible. So this is a quick way to kind of get this up and running so you can move forward. So yeah, a little plus on there. So I'm not calling you out. I just want to let you all know that that's actually what's going on inside of there. We've got your back. It's all good. So... Perfect. Think of it as a learning opportunity. We're all teachers, right? That's how that works. We're going to go ahead and hit escape and drop out. Now, something else, speaking of which, uh, you were also playing with the simulate. And that little bug or little problem that you were running into in the game mode, I thank you for finding that. That's actually an excellent spot for teaching as well um, because we didn't have that validate inside of here. So, yeah, that's a huge, awesome tip. So when you guys go back and watch his video or if you have already watched it, Check that out. That's a really awesome pro tip in there. So thank you for finding that one. Hey, look, there it is. That's the bug. It's not really a bug. It's just kind of annoying. So yeah, now you know how to fix that. That's an awesome one. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention. So let's actually open up that sequencer again. So let's just zip on over here. Grab said sequencer. Grab this one. Let's go ahead and open that one up. Something I wanted to point out, and we, we do talk about this in the actual lesson plan, is that there is this little guy right here. So this is an auto key. So while you're animating, if you don't want to go down and actually hit these little buttons to animate, you can leave this on. And if any value changes, it will auto key that. Now you do have to set a key first so it knows to auto key because if you don't set a key, it doesn't know that anything's changed. Okay, so set a key, turn one of these bad boys on. Oh, I lied. This is this one, my bad. I totally lied. It's this button right here. We'll do your auto keys. They're right next to each other. Good times, right? So there's that one. All right, something else I wanted to point out, uh, get to, uh, f you know, right around 43 minutes and 29 seconds um, and watch your character spin around and jump off. Uh, I saw that coming while I was watching the video. I think it's super silly. Uh, I definitely want to throw a thank you for the belly laugh. That was amazing. It was super, super good. So thank you for that one. Um, 49 minutes in there. Uh, there's an amazing tip in there. I'm not going to tell you what it is here now because I definitely want you all to go back and check out his videos. So thank you again for that one. That's a good tip. I love it. Love it. It's a spoiler. I'm not going to spoil it. So there's that one. All right. So at about 53 minutes and 14 seconds, you were jumping inside of the character. So let's jump inside of the character in here. And over here on the far right, I'm going to go ahead and dock this up here. There are a ton of details in here. And you're like, oh, well, which ones have we actually changed as the developers that are actually making stuff? And you can actually go into any project and do this. So here's your little tip. If you look up here in the top right, there is a little eyeball icon. If you click this and say, show only modified properties, you can see which ones we've actually messed with. So let's actually open up that character movement. And you can see that indeed we're playing with the gravity, uh, the floor angle in here as well and the jump velocity, the air control. So any of these that are actually showing up now because this is toggled on, okay, you'll actually be able to see which ones we were playing with. So as you're working through this project and you're like, hmm, I wonder which one he was actually messing with in there. Now you know, and you can figure that out really easily. Uh, here's another little pro tip too. If you have any of these open, any of these kinds of, you got a little checkbox on the left, and then you got the actual text on the right. If you click on the text, that whole thing will disappear, right? But if you click on the little checkbox, it'll stay open and you can select multiples, which is nice. So another little pro tip in there. So that's always a good thing.
uh, at about 50, let's say 56 minutes in there, you started talking about interfaces. So Dev Addict, I'm interested. Uh, where are some interfaces and ways that we could actually improve this project? Um, I teach a lot of this stuff at the collegiate level, at the college level, and I would love to hear your explanation on why interfaces are better and ways that we could actually improve performance throughout this entire piece. So please send them my way. I would love to see them. Or do a quick little video, or if you actually got videos, you said you had a bunch of them in there. I haven't gone through all your videos yet. You have a bunch of them. Thank you for that. Point me to the ones that will actually be most helpful. Drop them in the comments in there. I'd be very, very appreciative of that one. All right. Now, you were also digging through... Let's look at this. So our character in here, let's just leave this one open. You had found the Celebrate. Actually, let's do this. So Windows, we're going to go into our project settings. Oh, buddy, my brain. There we go, project settings. So let's go to edit, sorry, and then project settings. So inside of here, you came in and you were looking into the inputs. Boom, right there. And you said action mappings. And you're like, hey, there's a Celebrate. And then you were confused. Middle mouse button, why isn't this working? So like I had mentioned at the beginning, these games are very much collaborative and projects are very much collaborative. This video is meant to be collaborative. So this actually came from another studio, uh, Liquid Development, go look them up. They've done some amazing things. They were super helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much of that, uh, that um, the studio. They did, they did an amazing job. I love it. It was super good. So they actually built this in here and it's not built into this character. So if you go into this little teacher marketplace, we're gonna go dig in. Let's go into the blueprints character BP, you'll notice that they have one in here. So this is from Liquid Development, hence the LD on it. So if we double click on this, you will notice that we have a whole group of extra things inside of here. And hey, there's your celebrate right there. So interactive celebrate right there. Now, here's the trick. Let's go back to ours. Let's go hit one on the keyboard, come back here. And I'm going to change this over to play. Oh, there we go. And if I hit the middle mouse button, I'm hitting it. You guys can't hear it, I'm sure. But nothing's happening, right? I can still jump, but nothing's going on. So the question is, why? What's going on there? And I'm sure some of you know this, but this is what's actually happening. So let's go into our world settings. So I'm going to go this way, go into world settings. And inside of here, we can see that the Defon Pawn that is actually, oh, come on, Unreal, work with me here. The Defon that's actually using here the default pawn is this character okay so the epic character not your epic character ld so let's go over here change this to your epic character ld where are you at there we go oh i'm clicking on the wrong one hold on there we go that's what i'm looking for so now when i play it won't seem like there's really anything different at first but if i click the middle mouse oh hold on i hit the right mouse <laughs> Ta -da, you can actually celebrate now, be warned, because if you come over here and you die or get yourself killed, which I can't do with this character because I haven't actually set this up, so let's do this. Let's go into levels. Let's say we want this one to actually always be loaded. Let's go ahead and play. Wait for it. Okay, cool. So I can still celebrate with this character. I'm going to come over here and die. Oh, I still haven't set that up yet. One moment. And the reason that is set up uh, is because I'm using a different character here. So let's just jump off the edge play from here double check bug fixing all right there we go this character is doing what it's supposed to so let's jump off and there we go now if i middle mouse click you notice nothing happens mm, interesting why is that so i'm going to leave that one to y'all and see if you can figure out what it is i do want to actually create a whole bunch of videos that explain a little bit more in depth of what's going on within this whole set of activities and you know come back and check them out so there it is all right so another little thing that I would like to post to you is that you talked about uh, the interfaces um, at 50 minutes and s 56 minutes. Sorry. So the 56 minute mark in your video there, um, Dev Addict. Again, I'm interested. Let me know what's, what, what you're talking about in there. I, I want to see what's actually going on with that one. Um, and yeah, then again, at uh, the whole one hour and 20 minutes and 29 seconds or so, you talk about them again there. So yeah, I would love to see what it is that we can do, again, just to make this thing, you know, an educational talk back and forth piece. That's going to be super awesome. All right. So let's move on. So at uh, one hour and 23 minutes, 19 seconds ish, you talked about the actual door bool inside of the blueprint door. So let's actually open up that one. So inside of here, go into there, we'll go into the door, do, 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 this guy right here. And you mentioned this at the end of it. 
Good call. Uh, I had actually totally forgotten that this, it worked and tests and I put it together and it was a thing, but you're right. This is bad coding. Thank you so much for pointing that out. That is an excellent, excellent point. Uh, so this definitely needs to be rearranged the way you had rearranged it in yours. So yeah, very awesome on there. Um, the other thing that you had mentioned um, is this section up here. Now, yeah, this works. You're right. This totally does work. And again, I want to open up that conversation, create a dialogue. What's another way to actually set this up? Which way would you prefer? Which way do you like to set it up more efficiently? Let me know. I'm, I'm all ears. I would love to learn a little bit more about that one. Um, and then at the hour and 32 mark, you started talking about how the game character, and I think this is excellent advice is why I would bring this up. Um, the, the way we ended up setting this up is that we actually have uh, the key saved in here. Whoop. Am I in the wrong one? I'm in, no, I'm in the room. Oh, I'm in the character. Haha, <laughs> I need to be in the game. So let's go into the game. Um, we actually set it up so that the player has the key inside of here, so inside the game mode. And you're right, the reason that we set this up was so that if the player dies, they just die off. I did not set up a uh, controller in this one. Um, I kind of skipped that step because the defaults worked well enough. Again, you know, development, things can always be changed. Bugs are always there and little little tweaks here and there are always nice to have uh, to look forward to in the future. So yeah, very, very awesome. So yeah, good tip. Good point on that one. Um, okay, so at an hour and 43 and 23 seconds-ish, uh, you started jumping into, let's jump into here. Uh, hold on, let me find it real quick. This bad boy right into here. So you jumped into the actual jump boost. So that is this bad boy here. And looking inside of the event graph, uh, you started ripping this sucker apart and putting it together the way you wanted it to work, which is great. I think that's excellent. And I, I really am glad that you had done that because it really shows what's going on down here below. And a lot of this is just redundant code, like this whole end in here, this doesn't even exist. You know, it doesn't need to exist once you actually connect it. Because in Activity 5, what we end up talking about is just taking your sounded location and you can do this, boom, easy mode. And then it just bypasses everything you see over here on the right and then just connects everything up and down here. So yeah, if you are all interested in the way that that code was actually written and why we wrote it the way that we wrote it, Dev Addict nailed it. Thank you again for dropping that in there. That's super, super cool that you were able to do that. And very succinctly too, your explanations are very awesome. So yeah, very cool. So it's doing the same thing down here which is just an easy mode, just da -da, connect it. Um, one of the other reasons, just to kind of, you know, a little bit of transparency behind the way these things are built is that, you know, nobody likes to read a giant block of text and then writing all that stuff out would have been awful. So that's why we want to do these little videos as opposed to actually having you all read out all that text. So for those of you that are watching this, please, please let us know which sections you want a little bit more explanation on because we're here to help out with that one. All right. So let's look at, so at one hour and 42, let me go check my notes. You were actually talking about this. So you know what? <laughs> yeah, I did ask that question. So don't even worry about it. Kind of rereading through my notes. I was jumping around it. Now, before I go, I do want to throw a couple little things your way because I did talk about this and I love throwing teasers in some of my classes. So if you all had noticed up here in these levels, there's a bunch of them up here that are finished for examples, right? So check this one out. I definitely want to throw this your way. So if you open up this level five and let's just right click on each of these and we'll set them all to loaded. Whoop, make sure that's visible. Otherwise we get a funny little, not really an error, but definitely an annoying little bit that goes in there. And then we'll say streaming, always loaded. There we go. So from here, I'm going to hit F11. Here's another quick trick for you. Hit F11. You can actually go full screen. You will notice that we have all the coins in here. Because some of you may be wondering, where, where were the gems? What were the things with the gems? So there's some gems that are around here. There's also a couple other blueprints that are kind of built in here uh, that didn't really get talked about and what you can actually do with them. So there is the key, an actual working key in here too. So you can walk right in there for that. There are a few gems that are actually placed around here to entice the player to try something to do a little bit harder than what they would actually try and go for. Um, there's a couple other things that are going on in here that you may not be aware of. And this is actually a pretty good spot to kind of point it out. When we're building levels, it's not all about code and making things pretty. It's also about leading the player where you want them to go. And you'll notice that throughout the level, there are areas where the ground is actually leading the player to where they should be going. They're typically subtle, and you may never even notice them, but they're there. In fact, I was even using them when I was building this to lead the user so they knew where to come across when they're going from one section over to the next. So little tiny subtle things like that can help out. Light is another way to actually lead a player from one location to another, which is super helpful. And last but not least, remember when I hit, 
the, the control zero and actually like set up a screen or a, a little bookmark. If you hit zero, <gasps> look at that. There's a little spot back here. I'll let you go explore this and check out the little blueprint that's right here too. Uh, again, big thank you to uh, those of you that are watching this thing. Uh, a huge thank you to Dev Addict. I thank you so much for this. This is awesome to see what happens when you send this stuff out into the wild and what you might all end up finding when we you know, don't see everything while we're working on it because there's a million things to think about when you're going, doing game design. So again, awesome. Thank you so very, very much. And uh, you know, make some more awesome stuff. I would love to see what you all come up with because this is only the beginning of what this project can be used for. So yeah, go kick some butt.